Welcome to day number 13 of the 14 day challenge because I believe that no one should walk alone. I'm Quentin and I'm the pastor of AOC New Albany. And today's topic is going to go a little bit beneath the surface. And we are really going to be talking about some transformative uh, uh, gifts, uh, if you will, that should be present um, in our life. It should our life should look different when we become uh, in Christ. I'm excited because there's one more video left. There's one more. You are almost done. And I'm really excited. This has been really uh, enjoyable for me. Today's topic, we are going to be discussing the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. And so I want you to grab your Bibles. You should know the drill by now and turn to Matthew chapter seven. And we are going to talk about this. And then we're going to look at one other um, set of verses. And we will be really breaking down <clears throat> about the fruit of the spirit. Matthew chapter seven, verses 15 through 20. And it says this. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but they are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit. You can identify, identify. That means that you can see them. You know who they are. Sometimes you don't have to know someone's name. You don't even have to know their mama, their daddy. You don't have to know what street they live on. You don't even need to know um, their government name, honestly. You don't need to know that. You can identify any single person by this one characteristic, which is a true biblical principle. You can identify them by their fruit. That means by the way they act. That means it doesn't matter the lip service. We can say what we want. We can say how much we love God. We can say how much we worship him and how much he is Lord. But if you want to know where someone uh, truly, uh, the way that they live their life is not by what they say with their mouth, but the way that they live their life. That sounds like a pretty consistent theme of what you've been hearing over these last 14 videos. It's not enough to proclaim out of our mouth that we love him and that he's Lord and he's Savior. There must be a change. There has to be. There has to be a change that when someone looks at us, they say, hey, I know you from high school, but the way you act is totally different. Now I know there's a God. And when someone says that to you, <laughs> there's no denying it. Because, man, let me tell you something. I was a hoodlum in high school. And when someone saw me that said, you preaching the gospel, if they only knew, I said, bro, if you only knew. This is proof of the power of fruit. We know them by the way that they act. Can you pick up grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can uh, cannot produce bad fruit and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. It is a biblical truth that no matter what, fruit is present in your life. <clears throat> no matter what, fruit is present in my life. The Bible does not say that if you have bad fruit, it won't be present. That's not what it said. It said that whether, whether it's bad or whether it's good, there was always evidence of it. And you, can, you know that by the way a person acts. What determines how a person acts? How they think, how they see themselves. Do they take God seriously? Do they walk with integrity? You know, um, do they do they really mean what they say? Are they really willing to live for him? I'm talking to you about the fruit of the spirit. You will know them by their fruit. And so here is a question. If no one knew your name. And we put 20 people in a room. And we watched them on video for about 60 days. We would know who they are based upon how they act. And so the question is, based upon our life, I'm talking about me too, 
how we live our life. People may not know us by name, but the question is, how do we act? Do we have the fruit of the spirit or do we have another fruit? I can tell you that um, a apple that is ripe from a tree, ripe, it's juicy, it's full of water, right? It goes when you bite into it. I don't know. That was probably a terrible sound. That is a fruit. But an apple that has sat on the corner or sat in the fridge for four months that is brown is still an apple too. It's just a bad fruit. So the question is, are we good fruit or bad fruit? I want to be good fruit. And so I want you to turn over to Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to read this together. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. So notice, maybe you're asking, okay, Pastor Quentin, so what type of fruit should I have? That is a fantastic question. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 is about to answer all of your questions. I'm sure of it. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So I want to talk to you about the good fruit. What should be the good fruit that is present in our lives? Galatians chapter 5 just walked us through that. Notice, it is the fruit of the Spirit and not fruits of the Spirit because there's one vine. That vine is flow. It's the three in one of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's from the same vine that produces fruit, not fruits. So be I'm, uh, excuse me, as I put on my biblical teacher hat, but I'm bringing clarity. It's not fruits of the spirit. It is fruit of the spirit. And so it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. What's love? Love here is God's unconditional love. So the fruit that is developing in you and me is the same unconditional love that God extended towards us is the same unconditional love we can extend um, to other people. The fruit of the spirit is joy. And so this is joy that's not determined by our changing circumstances, but it's rather it's joy because we serve an unchanging God. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Joy comes up from the inside. It's not about emotions. It's about this thing that no matter what, I have the joy of the Lord inside of me. The fruit of the spirit is peace. Peace is knowing who your father is and you are unbothered and unchanged by life's issues that come your way. That means no matter what, you and I should be like Jesus that when the storm came, man, we went to sleep on the back of the boat. You can't go to sleep in the middle of all hell breaking out in your life unless you have peace. And it's the peace of God inside of you that says, hey, I know it's all crazy, but you're going to be okay. The fruit of the spirit is patience. This is self-restraint from emotions, from, from emotions taking over. That means that as much as you want to lash out, you have that, mm, I'm just not going to go there. Let me just be patient. This is fruit of the spirit. Notice, these are not necessarily um, high heavenly biblical things. These are things of words that we know that God equipped us that on this earth we can walk and have Evidence of the fruit of the spirit in our life. Kindness. Treat everyone with mercy and with grace. Be kind. Be kind to other people. You don't have to be nasty. You don't have to be short. You don't have to cuss everyone out who, who you know what I'm saying, cut you off on the road. Be kind. I know that's a curse word to some people. It's okay to smile. Show your teeth. Be kind, man. Goodness. Doing for others that displays in action. So it's one thing to say, oh, looks like that, you know, there's some people in our area who could use some food. Goodness says, let me actually do something about it. Let me go volunteer, you know, um, somewhere local to help go feed someone. Or let me go help um, provide food or clothing or whatever that is. Goodness follows in action. And so we should have action in which we show that we really are um, believers of Christ. Faithfulness, it's a firm foundation and belief in the truth, which is the word. 
It's a firm foundation and belief in the truth. So faithful. So be full of faith. Be full knowing that God will do what he said he's going to do. You don't have to question it. You don't have to doubt it. He will do it because he says in his word that he's not a man that he should lie. The next fruit of the spirit is gentleness. And it's the way that we handle people and with life. I tell my son, who is four, and as you can imagine, a four-year-old will find anything to destroy. He will, he just wants to put holes in the wall. And I have to tell him, hey, Judah, be gentle, be gentle. That's not a feminine word. I'm teaching him the fruit of the spirit, and I'm already depositing the word inside of him. Hey, Judah, it's the way that we handle people in with life. And some of you that you are responsible, maybe you're a manager or a leader, be gentle with people. You don't have to be rough with them, okay? It's not a good sign that you run everyone off who is in your circle and no one likes to be around you. It's probably because you're not gentle. If no one likes to be around you, look in the mirror. It's probably because we don't know how to contain or tame our tongue. That's not a good sign. And last and certainly not least, oh, self-control. Oh, buddy. This is the ability to control what we say, what we do, look, 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 what we look at and what we respond to because we yield it to the spirit. It's the ability to control what we say, what we do, what we look at and how we respond. Self-control says, I don't really need to reply. Even though I want to say something, I'm not going to say it. Self-control says, Oh my goodness, I want to go look at that. And if you're a guy, you probably understand what I'm saying. Self-control says, I have no clue why she is wearing that. And I saw it from the glimpse of my eye, but I dare not take a second look. That's called self-control. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not going there. This is the fruit of the spirit. It says that, that they will know that, listen, we will know them by their fruit. So here's a question. Here's a question. What does your fruit identify you as? Are you patient or are you impatient? Do you have self-control or do you lash out against everyone? Are you quick to bite your tongue or you always have to be the person that gets the last word. See, right now, I'm preaching, and I shouldn't be preaching, but I'm just going to help you with this. I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit. There should be evidence, evidence in our life that Jesus Christ is messing us up. And the way that we used to be is not the way that we can stay any longer. I'm talking about the, the capacity for change and the capacity for new. I am believing that we are just not going to be a church that believes in miracles, signs, and wonders, but we are going to have a church that their lives, of, like of members, that our lives are changed by the gospel, and we talk like it, we walk like it, and we act like it. Come on, let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that the fruit of the Spirit, God, that you have given us every avenue, God, to not just come, God, to be saved and to be pulled from hell into heaven, but God, you have given us the ability, God, that here on earth, God, we can be a reflection of heaven, God. We can show that there is a change in the things that we do, the way that we respond, and that God, the, God, even the things that we look at. May our family see a change. May our spouses see a change. May everyone at our job see a change. May there be evidence change of an inside out just growing pains, Lord. But may we be mindful, God, that we are no longer our own, but you bought us with a price, God. So may we live for you and may, may it be reflective of the gospel. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Hey, listen, congratulations on finishing day number 13. Day number 13 of the 14-day Giant Challenge. There is one more day. You are turning the last corner right now. Meet me at the finish line. We are going to finish this up. Congratulations. You are this close to becoming a kingdom giant. I call you blessed, and I'll see you on the last video.